In this review, we look at another Diecast Masters model, and it's the Caterpillar 390 FL. The real machine is one of the larger hydraulic excavators, and it typically weighs around 90 tons. Out of the shipping carton, the tin is wrapped in a nylon bag, so let's open it up so we can get it out. And if we open the tape, we're highly delighted to find the bottom of the bag and not an open end. So with an angry look on our face, we seal it back up and go to the other end. This time we expect to see an open end, and we do. So full of excitement, we can pull out the tin that resides inside. But before we go much further, let's do a tin check. The printing on the tin is excellent, and that includes technical details about the real machine. And there's also a very nice photo of it on the lid. So that's the outside, let's move on to the inside and take off that lid. And you can see that that lid is also very high quality because it's double skinned and not some thin and flimsy thing. Included in the tin is a mini catalogue of Diecast Masters range of Caterpillar models. The last thing to do is to pull off the big piece of thick dense packing foam. So you stick your fingers in the holes and with a bit of pulling the piece comes out. With that we get our first look at the model sitting in the bottom of the tin. And when you get a hold of it to pull it out, just make sure you've got hold of something solid. There's no assembly to do because this model is complete out of the tin. The underside of the model is simple with little detailing. But the track frames look good, although they don't have working rollers. The metal tracks are nice and they have bolt head details. The cab has a plastic protection guard and there are mirrors and lights. And inside there's an operator in high-vis clothing. He's a hard worker though because he just sits there driving 24-7. The rear part of the body and the counterweight is metal and there is some detailing in the casting. One of the nice aspects of the model is the graphics, which are very sharp. Viewed from the top there is some silver paint highlighting which is used to provide detail, although the colour match of some of the plastic parts is slightly off. The boom and stick has got hydraulic lines and some warning graphics, and the connection rivets are nice and small and painted. The big metal bucket is a decent casting with wear plate details. There is some plastic on the model and that includes the handrails and all of the grab rails. Also some of the larger yellow elements are plastic. And that includes the tanks and the opening door. Once again we make it out onto the Cranes Etc test track and the tracks won't roll on a smooth surface. But in fact they are very free rolling. They are also spring loaded so they're good at giving you a laugh. In fact it's so good I think we should try that again. Ha ha ha! So after that nonsense, let's try the crawler tracks on a rough terrain. And they roll easily and you can even steer the model as well. Of course, as you would expect, you can rotate the machine. But it is stiff in certain places and so it's not entirely free swinging. Moving on to the all important digging functions. And the first thing to say is that the hydraulic rams are certainly stiff enough and they will hold any pose that you set. And for the most part, the range of movement is good. The model can be set to reach up or out, or if you want to go for the compact look you can fold it right in, turn up the bucket and it looks nice and cuddly. But one area where the model doesn't perform well is digging at depth, and that's because there's a very restricted movement on the main boom rams. At the lowest point there's still quite a bit of piston exposed, and it's a pity that the model engineering wasn't a little bit better to get a full range of movement. However, there is other functionality which has not been seen often before on Caterpillar models, and that includes a plastic engine cover which opens, and there's even a tiny little prop that you can use to pose it open and see the engine underneath. Next up, there's an access door in the side of the body, and you can open that up to get access inside. For the last bit of functionality, we move to the cab, and the cab door opens, but the man inside does like his work because he's fixed, and he's not easily removable. <laughs> This is a good, robust model from Diecast Masters, and it's beautifully presented in its packaging. The detailing is good, and it's nice to see some warning sign graphics on the model. And another good thing is the additional functionality, such as the opening cab door. 
So overall it's a good heavy excavator model and it's highly recommended. 